Hello and welcome to the Linux Lads, um, the only Linux podcast that, uh, you know what, I stayed up till 4am watching the election, so I'm too tired to come up with a joke here. <laughs> um, as usual, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. I'm Mike and fuck the wall. <laughs> Oh, God, we said we weren't going to mention the election on this episode, but it's, we've roundly failed. Um, <laughs> Two seconds in. We're, yeah, we're no more than 10 seconds into the episode. My God. Um, yeah, so the elephant in the room, I guess, isn't it? Uh, it's not Linux news, but yeah, uh, me and Mike both have the same thing that we re- wrote on the notes here, is that we're trying not to just refresh the news app on our phones every 30 seconds <laughs> we are we are recording this on the we are recording this on the wednesday so uh yeah if if you guys when you listen to it know the results we don't know so don't come back to tell us yet because we like the surprise whatever that sounded better in my head <laughs> yeah don't travel back in time and <laughs> tell us and if you do give us these the sports almac or whatever it was <laughs> oh yeah when this comes out we might actually know who's winning but like yeah yeah we don't but anyway moment. Let's not dwell on it. Let's get to let's uh, let's get to Linux and technology and things you can plug in. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why I said that. That was weird. But <laughs> so, so, such as segues. Yeah, terrible segues. Um, <laughs> first up, so the first bit of news is something I think has caught everyone's eye: the new Raspberry Pi four hundred. Um, the and i think this is cool because i like their little convention that they're going with here so it's like the four the x hundred is this now going to be extra you know is it going to be something more than a pie so maybe we could uh, if anybody hasn't heard about it yet the 400 is the raspberry pi 4 encased in a swanky uh what do you call it, keyboard case, right? So the whole thing, the whole computer is a keyboard and you just hook it up to your TV like you do with the he all the personal computers of uh, of old ages, like in the 80s when you had a Commodore 64 or that kind of thing that I'm too young to think about. Uh, <laughs> and um, I actually saw something like that. Get my off dad, our podcast, Poppy. <laughs> I, my, my, my dad used to teach uh, uh, IT after class to kids when I was about three years old. And my very first memory, one of my first memories is my dad uh, teaching a class of... Uh, uh, of computers on IQ one five one, which was like the socialist equivalent of the of the Commodore sixty four, and it did look like the, the Raspberry Pi four hundred looks much better than that, obviously. But it's the same concept, and it's Raspberry Pi four, Pi four based. And yeah, it's possible that you are right, Shane. That uh, when the Raspberry five comes out, it's gonna be the five hundred is gonna be this kind of a form factor because you know they follow the naming convention conventions. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I did actually f- find it very interesting. When I saw Raspberry Pi 400, it wasn't actually what I thought it was going to be. When I saw that, I thought it was going to be like a desktop, like actual desktop grade Raspberry Pi. That's what I was expecting. And I guess it sort of is, but there is a, a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. Um, I don't know if I, I didn't actually read too much into it, so I don't know if it's higher spec, but I don't think it is. I think it's oh, the only thing that's slightly better is the chipset in it. Uh, like you know, uh, a newer model of the very same thing, but I think the amount of RAM is going to be the same. Sorry. <clears throat> so the uh, the amount amount of RAM is going to be the same, and uh, depends on your needs. For me, I can't use a Raspberry Pi for a desktop. No way. But uh, maybe there are some people who can. But it also has got the GPIO pins coming out, uh, so you can you know do uh, for lots of fun things. You can use it for. Um, what for like uh, gaming you know the the old not old school legacy no whatever you call the gaming when you play silly games from old times retro retro yeah retro gaming uh, emulators and things like that yeah. yeah um um interesting thing that you said that you couldn't use it as your desktop computer um well i mean obviously us were power users we like to multitask and do everything but it's i think it's surprisingly useful i mean i saw a recently i saw a video of uh, i think it's quids up on his youtube channel um himself and his gonna mention that yeah I yeah, saw that. yeah himself and his his uh wife girlfriend i'll just say partner himself himself and his partner um were trying out different or have been trying out different linux distributions um, but this one was built specifically for the Pi in mind, and it's just um, Ubuntu, like the latest 20, 2010. Um, and they're saying that 
it actually seems to be pretty good. I mean, they said they were able to do um, 720p YouTube, they could do 1080p YouTube, whereas um, other distros like um, they tried Manjaro and Manjaro was struggling and things like that. And they said that and only 1080p YouTube only lo- uh, dropped about 15 frames and they said they barely even noticed, but they, they just had the stats for nerds up and they could see that was happening. But they said if it was just um, streaming, for example, XBMC from their local network, they said it dropped like maybe uh, less than five frames to um, stream video. So they said it was it was rock solid. And then you have your normal uh, Ubuntu uh, GNOME desktop for navigating around. And they said the performance was was uh, barely like there was no noticeable um delay or anything like that in with navigating the ui so that that's good that that's it seems to be optimized that well that you're able to run it on the the raspberry pi raspberry pi has always had a great uh a great reputation for me anyway for video and for video transcoding and encoding and whatnot because of um the the, I, 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 the details escape me but anyway but um uh, several years ago, I had a, a little Plex server on a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. I'm going to say 3. I can't actually remember. But um, I had a little, yeah, a, a really nice little Plex server set up in a drawer underneath the router. It was connected via Ethernet to the router. I had uh, a USB hard drive with all the movies and TV shows. And um, it had I had a web interface set up on it. It was, it was brilliant. Um, so... And you could just stream your media directly from that without any problems whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, I would believe that I would have an easy time believing that the Raspberry Pi can be used as uh, a fairly capable desktop system. Um, I don't think anyone doubts that, to be honest. Uh, well, depends on the course. Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the use case, obviously. But like, if you're just looking to do basic computer things, it's pretty much fine. I mean, there was there was Libra Elec for a while, and I think that could run um, flawlessly on the on the um, on the Pi two or in the Pi three, and like could stream everything. But that was literally just turning the Pi into an appliance, as in this is your um, uh, this is your Cody box, um, and that's its only function, which is fine if you just stick it under the TV. But it's not that a desktop use case. Yeah, yeah. What is compelling about this, for me at least, is especially that demo is, was only up until that point when it was actually con- thought, oh, like you could stick this down in front of your six, seven, eight-year-old kid and they can play their games and everything and it's using hardly any power. It's just a, a Raspberry Pi, hook it up to a monitor, away you go. Um, especially now that it's now integrated into a keyboard and it's, the whole thing is it will take up even less space because rather than having a keyboard and the Pi in its own case then you just have the the Pi inside the keyboard so stick this down in front of your um, 6, 7 year old or whatever and away they go they can watch YouTube they can do whatever they want they can play their games they can play their uh, Tux cart or whatever it is um uh or mm. mind test <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, i don't even know if there's mind test builds for arm but i'm sure i'm sure there are it actually a raspberry comes with mine uh minecraft oh minecraft yeah there's yeah. an arm edition yeah yeah we should do that we we, we had that set up actually oh yeah we did Andy, actually yeah Dublin that's maker true fair uh when we were dublin maker uh many moons ago it seems. Yeah, for, for for anyone who doesn't know what we're on about, um, with the Dublin Linux community, we had a stall at the Dublin Maker event, um, and it was all about Linux and showing Linux to people. And we had <laughs> a Raspberry Pi with the uh, the Minecraft ARM edition on it, and that's pretty much all the kids wanted to know about. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> and I remember um, parents coming up, and they're like oh what's the big deal like i know what minecraft is like my i see my kid playing minecraft all the time and so i i made a conscious effort to say no what's interesting is not that they're playing minecraft but they're playing minecraft on this and they 
uh, held up the credit card size like and they're like oh all right <laughs> so they yeah. they weren't getting the whole, i was like the demonstration is not that your kid can play minecraft the demonstration is that minecraft is being run on this <laughs> and it held it up and there then they got it could also be just that you can play minecraft because you know the, the perception some people have of linux is crazy like they they some people genuinely think there's no UI and you have to do everything on the command line. Yeah, and oh yeah. It, uh, the, compile it yourself. And the amount of people who think that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to actually correct my uh, one of my colleagues at, at uh, school at the uni recently, who said, "Oh, Windows is much, much, much more user friendly. You don't have to do the command line." And I was saying, "Yeah, no, there are many people who use Linux and don't touch the command line at all, uh, for whatever reason. It's just." Um, it's not thought that way still uh, still it's uh linux is usually taught as the command line first which i'm fine with it works for me but many people don't like that kind of thing yeah yeah i mean i under I, I i'm honestly guilty of this myself i rarely use the command line um because i only ever used it because i had to um I, if there was a gui alternative i would use that i'm, I'm the same but there's no guilt with it, is there? So if you that's the another another time and that why that time I actually cringed by I didn't say anything, is that I heard somebody saying, So how do I log into this thing so I can run Linux and somebody else we can actually download Linux and run it yourself. Which one? Well uh, well, how do I do that? Well just go for mint. And I'm like, Okay, well that's bad because a person who knows nothing about the other person as a as a human or as a user just immediately uh, recommended one distribution, which is to me the bad approach to 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 read. To, well, to they, have, they, to have to, they have to do something. They couldn't no, just say uh, ask first. Ask first. What's your experience with computers? What do you? What are you used? To? What do you want to learn, if anything, or what do you want to do, and then make a recommendation. If you just say Mint, or if you just say Ubuntu, or if you just say I don't know uh, Arch, you, it's. It, it's it's, it's a it's a gamble, but um, you're probably going to get less, uh, less or more hits uh, recommending something like Zorin OS or Ubuntu or Mint or Elementary OS, something like that. You're probably going to get more hits and more success than mm. if you say, "Oh, you're new to Linux, try Arch." Yeah, no, Arch probably <laughs> is not the best. Although for some people it would be, right? But yeah, no, yeah, I'm not yeah, discounting that for some people it would be. But for someone who's so that way inclined, when they get um, uh, used to Ubuntu, they'll probably get used to Ubuntu in a week, and they say, "Okay, uh, oh, so there's I get the whole base concept of this Linux thing. I can download an ISO, I can burn it, I can install it on my, on my desktop." Uh, Ubuntu. I'm getting tired of Ubuntu. Uh, is there something else out there? That though, that kind of person is going to find Arch anyway, or they're going to find Gen two or whatever they want Linux from scratch, whatever they want anyway. But I think the uh, by recommending Ubuntu or Zorn OS or Elementary OS or whatever is your is your poison, something like that, then you're going to get the people who say you're going to catch the people who say. All I want to do is turn on my laptop and browse YouTube. Yeah, but you need to find out which one of those that you just named, right? Because if you if you say uh, just mint, uh, it's yeah, it's it's gamb- it's a gamble. I I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you that it's not a gamble, but it's a, it's it's all about probabilities in, in my f- point of view. You recommend mint, and then the person is going to be like, okay, where's Chrome? And then you say. Well, from now on, and this is a lovely segue, Mint is actually recommending Chrome. Mint is actually they are actually rebuilding Chromium on their own servers. Uh, that was meant to be a nice segue to to a point on the news somewhere in there. Since since I mentioned <laughs> Mint anyway, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, they've uh, recoiled in horror at um, uh, 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 Canonical's approach to to bundling um, snaps. In other words. Uh, if you want to install Chromium on Ubuntu, it's going to be a snap. Even if you um, do not use the snap install command, you just do apt install, it's still going to be the snap. And their logic behind it is it's, few, it's freeing up developer time rather than um, targeting a specific build of Chromium for 20.04 for, um, or not 20.04. Uh, 
yeah, oh yeah 24 is an, is an LTS sorry uh, I misspoke I was, uh, in my mind I was thinking 1204 so there's 1204 1404 uh, 1604, 1804, 2004, rather than having specific bills of uh, chromium for each one of those, then they just have one target and that's a snap and then snap will work on all of them and that frees up development time. So that's their reasoning behind it. Um, some people do not like that, including um, Lint's uh, Mint, which is downstream, and they say that this is snaps by the back door or uh, we don't have control over this we're just accepting it downstream um, canonical could bundle anything inside the snap Ooh, mm-hmm. scary times um, <laughs> as I'm not saying the, 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 their argument or their argument doesn't have a, some val, uh, validity but it's not very likely that Canonical or this evil corporation who are going to bundle something malicious into the snap. But I suppose mm. that's the technical way and that's the open source way of if we can't independently vet it, then um, then it's no use to us. And I'm not saying that... Um, or, or like I think the snaps are open source. It's just the store isn't. So it's as long as you go around the store, then it's fine. Um, but you could independently vet it. But then Mint are like, no, we want to do our own thing, and snaps are evil. So, well, I know they put their money where their mouth is, and uh, basically dedicated uh, a lot of compute resources in the form of some kind of a new Ryzen build to just um, not just probably it does other things, but to uh, to basically build Chromium for them. They said that they shrank the six hour build time down to just over an hour. And yeah, I was reading about that as well. That okay, yeah. Uh, I, 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 it's good that they did it uh, because you know this kind of gives validity to the to their statements. They are still taking everything else from uh, Canonical, like the whole <laughs> system is built on Ubuntu. So uh, sure, right. Uh, Seems arbitrary, all right. Yeah, yeah but uh, like we we've had last time we had Matthew Miller on uh, and at from uh, from Fedora. They don't, they weren't. Uh, when I said that I'm installed uh, SnapD, one of the first things I install on on Fedora is SnapD. They were like, yeah, we don't, you know, necessarily, you know, too keen on the fact that it's basically canonical only controlled store, which I can understand perfectly. I can appreciate. I can that. understand that. And they also don't build that entire system on Canonical's uh, resources, right? They have to, they, you know, they, they, they do their own. They hold, they have Red Hat as the base for their operating system. And as well, they don't prevent you, right? That's the one thing mm-hmm. that um, basically rules Mint out for me is uh, they make choices for you. And it's not the only destroyer that does that. Like some people don't like elementary for the aesthetic choices or just the workflow choices. Some people mm-hmm. wouldn't like anything that runs GNOME or anything that runs KDE. I just, um, I don't like being, um, not uh, like being kind of forcefully told uh, this is wrong or this is good. You know, philosophically, if somebody makes a technical decision, that's one thing. If somebody forces a philosophical decision onto me, if I don't agree with the philosophical decision, then I don't like it. If I agree with it, then of course I like it, right? So depends. If it's Trump doing it, it's bad. If it's Biden doing it, well, I can live with that. <laughs> Careful there. <laughs> um, Down with this sort of thing. Supposed, supposed to be a partisan podcast or a non-partisan podcast, I should say. Um, but I guess that horse has bolted a long time ago. You should get a non-partisan <laughs> mic, you know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not pro Biden, but I'm definitely. Well, look, I'm I, only in as much as I'm very, very anti-Trump. So uh, I'm and, ambivalent towards Biden. I'm neutral towards Biden. Yeah. Uh, uh, I actually no. I would actually say I, I don't like his politics, and I I just think he's not Trump. So that's why I want him to win. But anyway, Jesus, no. <laughs> shit we nearly succumbed uh yeah i was gonna just go go back to the whole argument on or not argument the discussion about snaps um yeah i really need to educate myself on the on this whole situation because i've noticed in pop os that they seem to heavily favor flat pack and there are no snaps um in at least in the pop shop in the store um and i noticed the other day that spotify uh the the binary um was no longer offered like the one in the repos and it was only available as a flat pack and they said you should up you should switch to the spotify flat pack if you want 
updates to Spotify from now on. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering. I'm just I don't know. Does it, is is it like a a, a HD DVD versus Blu-ray kind of scenario? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think to me it's like anything else in Linux. You know, we are our choice. We are about choice. No matter how much people moan about fragmentation, this is our strength. So we give. So where Apple gives you one option, Microsoft gives you one option. We give you two or three thousand options, right? And that's it. That's that's our game, and people should just just accept it. There's two, and there's never gonna be yeah. just one. Even even with the uh, stupid things like that, you never see. You know, even with the window, well, never see windowing server, right? But even uh, you still I, have I, to, I've so. I vote third party, and I'm going app image. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the thing. You can do that. You cannot have the same level I'm, of freedom. I'm, I'm on joking. A Mac, I don't right? have a lot of app images, but I was just is, is there nothing it. to be said for another app image? Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I remember app images were all over the place. Like um, KDN Live was a big one for me. If you had KDN Live on a non KDE system, you could get it as an app image, and that was usually the most straightforward way to use it um but but yeah cuz cuz all the dependencies and stuff can be pretty hefty but it works right and in some cases that's the best way some people distribute their stuff as an up image some distribute it as a snap some some distribute it as a flat pack and uh, it's now a flat pack in pop os at least i believe yeah and I understand why people go with the, with. I understand why Canonical does snaps because you know Connor's, Connor's said that. Uh, I understand why people go with Platpak. You 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 do it once and it works across distros. You know from your Ubuntu based Elementary or PopOS to Fedora, they all favor flatbacks to the point where the GNOME Software Center on Fedora basically lists the sources and you can choose in some applications you have three choice three sources you know one for rpm and then fedora flatpak and uh, the flathub flatpak so it it seems to work well and it's getting better i've suddenly realized that i in some applications at least like the ones that were for example the planner that was made for elementary and i use it for uni that's much better as a flatback than it is as RPM because there are some styling issues that basically it's because it's made for elementary, it looks like elementary and it doesn't go well with the GNOME theme. But if you install it as a flatback, it pulls everything that it needs. So at least the icons are not missing. So it works. You just need to make it, be able to make an informed choice. And that's what mm. at least like Linux is all about that, right? You, you're going to have to, at least for some things, you need to look it up, get yourself a little bit into the community and uh, then you can understand what's going on and make choices and choices we have unlike the other people where they just give you a choice mm. of one agreed um let's move on to something else um this is a very interesting story and uh, a lot of opinions on this one actually um uh, or or iaa's youtube dl takedown ticks off developers and github ceo that's from torrentfreak.com. Um, so the RIAA, I believe, is the Recording Industry Something Association. Yeah, of America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously YouTube DL, for obvious reasons, that's unpopular. <laughs> um, the You know, it's a command line tool that allows you to download videos from YouTube, for those who don't know. And other video websites. It's not just YouTube. And Yeah, that's the thing. It's It's poorly named. And they put some examples in their code in their code that basically said this is how you download the latest video by Justin Timberlake, and that made them an easy target. Yeah. But you can use it for so many other things. Like you don't have to touch YouTube, and you don't have to. Def you can download. Like people use it for many cases, right? I I used it to download a Slipknot video because I wanted to make a an electro remix of it. <laughs> It's the weirdest use for it ever. So many things to <laughs> unpack there. This is this is this is not from um, personal experience or anything, but I hear from the great find that it works on porn Pornhub. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, well, like there's what hub? <laughs> there's there's two issues. I think one is that, at least for me personally, I I advocate for piracy. I think cultural. Cultural starvation is almost as bad as physical one, and people who can't afford art should be given access for free, and the system doesn't allow it. So I would not blame anybody for stealing a movie. I always knew you were on the radical left, Mike. 
Yes, I am. And uh, you see, if, if you saw me, I'm doing the, uh, what's his name? Um, Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, pointing <laughs> over the top and downwards. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that uh, voice. But anyway, he's, so, so that's, that's one thing. So second thing, like, do you guys, does nobody, like, I'm, I don't live in the United States. What is the Re Recording Association of Idiots in America or whatever it is? What, <laughs> what, 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 what right do they have to disable me from downloading something? Right. Well, that, that, it was a legal, a legal suit or a lawsuit or whatever you call it. Digital Millennium Copyright Act that also doesn't apply within the European Union, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Uh, you, you DMC, they, the American Association did a DMCA takedown on GitHub, uh, which is a global site. Of course, they have to abide by American laws, but that's the problem, right? I'm not in the America. I'm not in the United States. I don't want to. And, and something that I might have been used for whatever purposes, most of them imaginable are actually legal. No, I can't do that because, uh, because America, right? That's not good. Yeah, well, the EU does have something similar. That was around, we talked about this a long time ago on the show. Um, I had a very in-depth discussion about this. Uh, we'll, we'll find the episode and put it in the show notes oh, if, will we? if you okay. want to listen back to it. But, um, but by, like back when we sounded like crap, by and, by uh, we he means bike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. The article thirteen wasn't it? Like the it was part of GDPR and whatnot. And um, yeah, that was essentially similar. It was it, that was that was lobbying by the recording industry in Europe that then, brought that about. Then take it to the take it through the European courts. Because this is, you know, uh, that should be the issue. I, like that should be the way we have our own institutions. So bring it here, and let's 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 have a let's have a discussion. Let's let's submit to the judiciary. Uh, you know, let's give it to the judiciary, to the European judiciary, to to deal with it. And if there is no it's so tough though, like the the enforcement is the problem. Like it's so difficult to enforce these things when 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 you're on the internet, which is globally accessible like it's so difficult to enforce but you are innocent until proven guilty so until somebody until somebody proves you guilty at a court of law they should not and this is my obviously i'm not a lawyer right but at least and this is simplifying matters extremely but if you if you didn't do anything nobody can punish you so why should and i i know this is a commercial law and it's companies covering their ours with, with this because if it went to court it's going to cost so much money and they probably are going to lose so they are just doing it just like that and i don't blame github which is owned by microsoft for doing that like if i was running things that i probably do it as well because you know if not doing it will bring you another bucket of pain but it's like it almost wants me to want make me want to scream that that's not fair right we, they should not be able to uh, affect us outside of the United States. It's got nothing to do with this. Uh, there is another uh, whole rest of the world. It, it reminds me of uh, something tangentially related, um, and it involves Microsoft as well. Remember, um, possibly it was like five, ten years ago. I don't think I don't think it was ten years ago. Possibly it was five years ago. It was um, Microsoft Ireland were were brought up um, by the U.S. Um, authorities. And they said, "Oh, um, you're Microsoft. You're an American company. Um, all that data that you're storing over in Ireland, we want access to it." And all the all the three letter agencies were like rubbing their hands and saying, "Oh, we're going getting, going to get access to all of this data." And Microsoft Ireland um, stood up to them and said, "No, um, this is in a sovereign nation. You can't just we're in the um, mm. we're, it, we're in a sovereign nation and we're in the EU. It's a different jurisdiction. You can't just lay claims on it just because our parent company." I Microsoft of America are are American, um. So uh, I can't remember which way that went, but like fair place to fair play to Microsoft Ireland saying, listen, their servers servers are in Ireland, you can't touch them. <laughs> well, now they are they are creating submersible server center data centers, so maybe they just put them into international waters and uh, starling them out, uh, starling the data out, and in, <laughs> and put no the, one put, can touch put them. Welcome to the future, people. Put them on sea land. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sea lion. Oh, I love that but that's still in um, the UK waters, isn't it? So that's the that seems to be the problem, or is it? <laughs> I think that's what it was. Was he was claiming that it was just outside of of the uh, UK territorial waters, so oh. he could claim it as his own independent thing. Yeah, it's very, mu- it's very, it's uh, for those who don't know, sea land is like this old uh, platform. Yeah, it's like um, a stump of oil the, of the sea in the in the channel. Yeah, it was like and a stump of an oil oil rig. Like, um, just... it was yeah, it was a I think it was a naval platform used oh, in the war, it? and uh, for what I don't know what for, but um, yeah, but they basically made a country on it. Um and it was invaded by pirates and everything like it was wild. And, uh, <laughs> I <laughs> go look it up. I th- look I th- up yeah, I, th- it's, I, th- it's I think. He, yeah, he, I think he made his own passports and he made his own. Did he make his own football currency? team as well? Yeah. Well, there was even eleven of them. I always go by like five guys on a, on an oil rig or something. Yeah. Basically, yeah. And <laughs> if, you, if you see it, the thing is tiny. Yeah, like, but it was could... literally invaded at one point. Like it, it, the story is crazy. Like it was invaded by mercenaries. I swear to God. Like and they held them hostage and stuff for a few days and everything. Like crazy shit. It was. It's so funny though. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to Linux. Um, so just before we move on to other things, I, we would be remiss if we did not mention uh, twenty ten Ubuntu twenty ten, and twenty one oh four is going to be called Hirsute Hippo as well. Hirsute apparently means full of hair, so not me. That's right. So <laughs> I I am hirsute, for instance. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys have ever seen me, but like, uh, not you two guys. You guys have seen me, but the people listening. <laughs> but, I'm very hirsute. <laughs> but Shane, you've got new two new YouTube videos where people can watch it. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I I tried not to hawk the YouTube channel here too much because <laughs> just because it's I don't know, it just seems disingenuous or something. But uh, but anyway, Ubuntu. Uh, apparently, uh, Robin Williams was was one of those people who are just covered in hair. <laughs> but yeah, talk about Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, Ubuntu, which one? The twenty ten that is just out. It, uh, it's uh, Q uh, Austin Powers jokes. It's groovy, baby. Ah, uh, yeah. You see, I don't think I've seen it. Um, actually, actually, I have. Yeah, it's not 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 great movies. Um, they're fantastic <laughs> movies. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I, I don't really care either way. Uh, Groovy Gorilla. For those like me who didn't get that subtle joke, Ubuntu 2010, which is just out, is called Groovy Gorilla. Go- Ubuntu gorilla. 2010, which is just out, is called <laughs> Groovy Gorilla, which was uh, the name was. Uh, Oh, well, it was Martin Wimpress who came up with it. Uh, there is a great artwork, both the official one and, uh, like, by now traditional Sylvia Ritter's um, image of the Groovy Gorilla is really trippy in a in a trippy kind of way, and I really like it. It's going to be linked in the show notes. Uh, the features of it, unless you, if you haven't already heard, GNOME 338, uh, kernel 5.8, and uh, you know there are I don't know actually I I haven't even tried it yet. So anyone here tried uh, Groovy Gorilla? No, but um, Pop OS did an upgrade recently to 2010 um, because I think they just matched the version numbers. Um, yeah, they do. But uh, haven't noticed any difference to be honest. Yeah, it's an. I don't notice much difference. I, I think I think in Pop uh, 2010 is uh, improvements on their tiling and the way that they um, it kind of half uh, does tiling and half intelligently kind of. St- I think they're now can you can stack windows and tabs in in the segments, yeah. which is kind of interesting. I I don't personally use the the window hotkeys that much anymore because the reason for that is that I have dual monitors and they're two different resolutions, two different sizes. So uh, I'm not sure if that's the issue, but but basically the workspaces didn't really work on the second monitor. Like so, I would switch my workspace and I would you know manipulate my windows with the key, with the hotkeys and stuff. But like it would only work on the primary monitor it it wouldn't like i i can move windows between screens but when it comes to moving workspaces it's almost like the second monitor isn't part of the workspace thing like it's just it just does it on the primary monitor and that's it 
and maybe that's fixed since I haven't tried it to be honest but um, that was why I kind of stopped using that functionality. So next up, uh, the UK is to ban the sale of carrier locked phones from December 2021 uh, which is to me fantastic news and something that everyone should do to be honest. Um, yeah, like uh, I, I can't actually remember if they they don't do this in Ireland, no? I don't think so. I, no, I bought not that I'm aware of. I, I bought a few phones from a carrier and I don't think any of them were locked. Oh, you mean, or do they lock them? Oh, yeah, they very much do. They do? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Especially if you're billing. If you're billing, that, that shit is locked. If no, it's uh, effectively assumed that if you... Uh, well, up until recently, um, you, my um, personal experience may vary, but I just assumed that if you bought something from Vodafone or 3 or um, Air, that it'll be locked to that network. And there's like there's those um, used phone shops that are everywhere in Dublin. You go down to them, pay them like 15 or 20 quid, and they'll unlock any phone for you. So... <laughs> I had uh, I had an experience with O2 in England in like 2012, where all I needed to do to get the phone away from their network was to give them a call or something, and they they said okay within two days you'd be able to stick a card in there. So yeah, I I think I kind of always expected that this is basically just a norm because why would you lock it? Like uh, I, they... I know why, but. Yeah, they they Money. lock they lock it because uh one they people's inertia if you're lo- if if they create a barrier to going oh uh, oh uh, I want I'm going to go from Vodafone to three for example or from three to Air or something like that um uh, oh I want to go over there oh wait my phone doesn't work on it uh they're kind of hoping that people's just inertia will just stop them and also um. On a bill phone, they subsidize the initial cost. So, rather than yeah, paying think, for a yeah. five hundred euro phone, you with with a bill with their billing plan, you can say, oh, rather than getting a five hundred euro phone, I get it for a hundred euro plus my fifty or sixty a month, whatever. Um, you are um paying for the phone, but you're just paying for the phone in installments. So, like, it's a two year contract. You're 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 paying whatever the 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 monthly plan is plus you're paying back a ten or a month in order to pay off yeah. their subsidy. Yeah. They're just saying you have to stay with this network until you've paid for the phone, basically. Um but it's it's not quite that straightforward and I I don't think it's a good practice and I don't like it. That's why I always buy my phone. My OnePlus six T I bought that straight up and yeah, with I'm the no same. lock on it. And that's what I've been doing for the last few years. I just I I despise those contracts that lock you in for two years, and I think they're unethical, and I don't think they should do it. And yeah, they can get screwed. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, mine is just on a, a thirty day rolling contract. Effectively, I'm with the uh, GoMo nine ninety nine deal. So, it if I leave, I just lose the deal. Yeah, I like to be as portable as possible with everything like i i i still have a prepaid plan like because i just don't want to sign up to a contract oh, there's no reason the, the prepaid plans are good now like the gomo ones and the, what is the other one the 47 one or something uh i think technically gomo is a bill plan but they um you can leave whenever you want you just lose access to the deal because you're grandfathered into it. Um, I think for the forty eight .ie one is approaching from the other way around. It's technically pay as you go, but you have to top up by every month. But they can say you can have it auto top up. Gives you like put in your credit card details and set it up to auto top up. So they're approaching it through two different. Approaches one is technically a bill plan, the other is technically um, a pay as you go plan. But uh, once he set the pay as you go plan to auto top up, I mean, what's the difference between that and the bill plan? Mm. True. Um, just uh, jumping over to another another bit of news that we have seen recently. Um, so HBO Max quietly restored service to Linux users. Um, this is not super relevant to us but it will be relevant to our american listeners cuz we don't get hbo max but uh but yeah that 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 is encouraging um i noticed in the article they said they uh 
reached out to HBO Max uh, for a comment and they were kind of just brushed off. <laughs> they kind of said, you might be able to do it, but it's not officially supported. <laughs> I, 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 uh, this is from Ars Technica and uh, I love the fact that uh, the... Uh, the person who wrote wrote the article seems to be um, technically minded and so much so that he's actually making jokes around it and he goes uh, sometimes it seems like wide, uh, wide Vine is the DNS of digital rights management it can't be wa- a Wide Vine it was Wide Vine, it's always Wide Vine <laughs> <laughs> yeah well as long as it's not silver light <laughs> oh or what was the the uh, Linux or open source attempted re into moonlight? Moonlight, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, be- the 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 heady times of IE six were basically. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I've tried um, recently. I've tried um, Trinity Desktop just for kicks. Spin up on spin up Ubuntu in the. In the virtual machine, you want to server and install Trinity Desktop. And it comes with Conqueror, which used to be a decent, uh, like Swiss Army knife of browsing both files and internet, right? And I try to go. If you don't count Google, nothing else works in it anymore. Like the the web <laughs> has changed in last ten years, so much. Like that that you get this browser it's shipped with it, but I don't think it's like officially supported by the KDE folks anymore, and you can't you can't use these things you have to have a modern browser otherwise you're pretty much stuck with uh, like a few websites that might that might work and uh, but yeah i think it's it's good it's gotten more open the web at least the internet obviously not talking about the up things but we don't have any flash anymore there's less silver light uh, kind of things and that's good I know um, WebKit is is maintained by uh, uh, Apple, and I think um, Safari is a decent enough browser. But from what I hear, anything that's based off WebKit, so I don't know if if Apple um, develop the engine and then do loads of special sauce on top of it in order to make Safari work. But I've heard like things like Midori and things that are based off WebKit rather than based off Chromium and the Blink engine um, are. Uh, sincerely lacking to put it uh, bluntly <laughs> that they, people say that Midori is actually quite quite bad it's alright but a lot of websites seem to fail in it so yeah that's, I think that I'm pretty sure that's the default browser at least it was before on uh, elementary uh, Ras- Raspbian oh is it uh, for, uh, for the yeah. Raspberry Pi and I think it is on elementary as well no uh, I think that's right. Epiphany isn't it that's oh, Epiphany or is, is it called. okay Oh, I don't is, know. Uh, Epiphany, I think, is based off WebKit as well, isn't it? I don't. You know what? I can find out. There's GNOME Web, so that's Epiphany. Is or is maybe Midori is on? I don't know. We yeah. can look. We can mm. look it up. We should probably know these things. Uh, Elementary <laughs> OS default. You know, no, this we is, shouldn't. This is like a proper radio. Well, you know, Linux podcast. <laughs> browser, right? Well, I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Apple just uh, took whatever, what was it called before, KHTML or whatever, and well, then like WebKit, obviously, and took WebKit, took what's open source, massively customized it, never shared anything else. You know, that's that's the that's the way. Never shared anything what they did with anybody else, and just released Safari, which is it? It is a decent browser, like in as much as any other, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, never shared it with anybody. And then, then you know, uh, the rest of the WebKit community are stuck with not much. There are other uses, like if you, for example, if you use the Foliate, um, Foliate uh, ebook reader, that uses WebKit because uh, I think for for a, for a, like to open EPUB files and to, to, to render them. I think that's WebKit because it keeps crashing. Whenever I open Foliate, I get the notification that uh, GNOME WebKit something crashed, right? So, mm. but... Um, yeah, EP- EPUB files just basically use like a subset of, or not a subset, but they basically use just like a version of HTML and CSS, really. I think that's all they are. Yeah, I They're think so. XML maybe. Uh yeah, or X HTML as they say. And um uh sorry, just a throwback there. Yeah, elementary OS uses uh, Epiphany by default. And oh. Epiphany is based on WebKit GTK, which okay, so we could ask somebody 
I don't know how good that is. I haven't actually, you know, whenever the first thing that you install on any system, at least I do, is Firefox if it's not already not yeah, there. So, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Epiphony is very funny. <laughs> Isn't it Epiphany? Yeah, it's Epiphany. It's it's called Gnome Web, basically, in other places. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's that's one way of getting out of the argument. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't I can't say I can't say of your 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 English for, like English language fricatives. Like I say, the instead of the and uh, per instead of or for instead of whatever you know philosophical up f- philos- fricatives. I I like your uh, I like your little. Um... I, I love the the language of um, linguistics. I always uh, find it so interesting. So I'm very impressed that you know what a fricative is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm educated in it. Uh, you what, mate? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm educated, governor. I I can yeah. I, I, I can English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're from. Well, you 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 spent a long time in London, in it. London, in it. Yeah. And I I should stop doing that because then somebody will school me on how it actually is meant to sound. So uh, yeah, just yeah. just forget I said anything <laughs> because well, it's, it's, nice. it's okay. It's okay. You moved to Dublin, so you're forgiven. Um. <laughs> so if you go to Linux Lads, which is like a like a little you know plug to plug, uh, if you go if you take your Epiphany browser and uh, minimize your over the top Audacity window and go to linuxlads.com, uh, then what will you see? You will see. Uh, something went wrong with while displaying this page. Please reload or visit a different page to continue. And that's not good. That's crazy because there's not even anything really that dynamic on our. Well, on our hold website. on. Let me just yeah. first check that it's actually not our website to fail. No, our website works in Firefox. So uh, that maybe is just uh, because I installed uh, Epiphany as a or GNOME Web as a uh, flat pack. I don't know, but it just doesn't want to load. Because I I like to try things out, I also have Opera installed, <laughs> and I just tried uh, our website in Opera, and uh, and it, and it seems to be fine. No, it should like Opera is a. It's based on Chromium, yeah. Yeah, that's that's blink to the card. Oh, mm-hmm. by the way, did you hear? There's gonna be uh, like since we are having this free form discussion about uh, browsers. Did you hear? There's gonna be well, there is a released Edge on Linux. I haven't like Microsoft Edge. Chromium, oh like, yeah, the Chromium, dev version. Yeah, yeah, I've tried that. As, I much, as, as much as I said, I, I just admitted that I have Opera installed. I'm not going to install Edge. <laughs> I'm I'm going to play devil's advocate. I don't know why I say devil's advocate, but Microsoft Edge isn't that bad. Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously, not bad. it's it's just contributing to the dominance of the Blink engine, and that's not good. But um, as a as a browser, just if I objectively, it's it's good. It's uh, so I listened to the episode of Code Radio where Chris and Mike uh, discussed it, and uh, they mentioned that for the developer, if you use uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, uh, which, I quite like VS Code myself actually. And yeah. if you are doing any web development, like the integration between VS Code, which also is the Microsoft product, and Edge browser, is really good. Like you know, like I know I don't get because I'm not a web dev, so I don't get all the details they were talking about, but. Third is very very specific, but also like extremely like if you take a group of Linux users, a lot of them are going to be web devs, right? So for this kind of uh, group of people, apparently it's very good. Plus, then you get all the testing, and of course, more choice, more better, right? So I I don't think this needs a devil's advocate. I think it's good, you know. It, there's nothing bad about it, you know. It's it's okay. It does telemetry, and but you don't have to use it. What's less, what's less good is that Firefox or Mozilla seem to be kind of uh, not going anywhere nice. So. Poor old Firefox. Yeah, it's it's working <laughs> fine. I still use it. I use. It oh yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm using this for this um, GT meet that we're having at the moment. So it seems to be fine. Yeah, nothing wrong yeah, with. Yeah, I it. mean, I'll always always use Firefox. That's my default. But um, it's really taken a hammering in the market share. And they laid off. Unfortunately, they would laid off about half the development team. Yeah, they they are focusing on some other cool projects, and I do understand a lot. Of, a lot of people have a lot of criticism for Mozilla, but I do understand why they're doing what they're doing. Maybe they're not implementing it in the right way. I don't know. I'm I'm not an expert, but like the they they are trying to create a bit of an ecosystem. And I I think they can. They could definitely um have better money management. I mean for uh. uh a non-profit that's getting 
by five or six hundred million a year from Google, and that's pretty much their own source of revenue, to having a CEO who's getting like about four or five million a year, or a, not a, whatever his title is, could be chairperson or whatever. Certainly seems like a lot of money. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I mean, she's she's okay. She's got his story with Mozilla. But maybe not just because maybe just this time for a refresher on the top side, you know, just uh, just uh, maybe she um, was her name Mitchell Baker. Uh, maybe she could make space for somebody who knows where to take Firefox. Just an update. I reinstalled uh, Gnome Web from the Fedora repos using the RPM package and LinuxLets.com works fine in it. So maybe it was just the flat pack not adjusting. You're hearing it here live for folks. Yeah, we are. We are testing in production. <laughs> yeah, so visit <laughs> linuxlabs.com in Midori. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, visit our store, basically. You can see all the... Yeah, teespring.com uh, works great on and shows <laughs> our, our merch very well that's a, as well that's, in, in Midori. That is a great place to... Uh, maybe start wrapping up the episode i guess because you've already mentioned you've already used my lines um <laughs> yeah sorry i kind of i kind of stepped onto your uh prerogative there <laughs> sorry so yeah that's a subtle signal that it's coming close to the end of the episode um so yeah as usual um you can get us on telegram you can go to linuxlabs.com forward slash telegram uh, you can get to get to our Telegram group. I would encourage people to join because we're hovering around the ninety-ish members mark. So it'd be nice to get some new blood in there and have an have an old chat. Um, if you guys would prefer other chat pl- chat platforms, we're happy to accommodate in some way. Um, you know, we wouldn't be open source geeks if we didn't give our own listeners some choice. So if there's something you would like to see us on, like Discord or whatever like let us know and we could set it up if there's enough demand like that's no problem um as for the socials uh you could you can find them all on linuxlads.com just go there i'm really not arsed um you can go to our steam community uh which is which is surprisingly active uh and we 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 do have a little gaming group as well so um that'd be great um we don't always play games but it would be really cool to see people uh join that um you can get us on twitter at linux lads uh so yeah interact with us there if you want to give us some money go to linuxlads.com forward slash donate uh go to forward slash store if you would like to buy a t-shirt and a mug um we did receive some like personally i ordered some samples and the white mug was not fantastic yeah so i believe connor took that one down (laughs) he didn't get around to it so we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out <laughs> so yeah just word to the wise if you order the white mug we're very sorry but the 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 quality of the design on the white mug is not very good so we would discourage you from buying that um that's not throwing shade at our supplier it's just the truth um so yeah we would encourage you to buy the the, the black background mug to put your tea or coffee in with our lovely logo on the side um yeah, you can also get us on Mastodon, linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon. Um, yeah. Any closing thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, what's that famous 70s band that Connor probably really likes? Pink Floyd, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, you know when they start Pink chanting, Floyd. tear down the I wall. Like Pink Floyd too. Tear down the wall, tear down the wall. Yeah, that uh, kind of thing. You mean tear down the wall? Yeah, it's that thing. Tear down the wall. Another brick in the wall, you mean? No, they, 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 I yeah, think at the, the end of the song they start yeah, chanting, they do. tear down the wall. Tear down the wall. Down the wall. Oh, okay. Something. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, we so when you're listening. No education. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it for us from for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed the madness. Uh, so signing off, I'm Shane. I'm Pink. I mean, I'm Connor. I'm Mike, I think. Yeah, I'm Mike. Yeah, yeah, he's we've verified that he is Mike. See you next see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.